In this video, we will be discussing the dynamics of a simple plate. The plate has dimensions of 2000 by 200 by 10 mil and is made from steel. We will be using five different methods of analysis to determine the dynamic properties of the plate. The inputs and outputs for each method are listed here, and we will go into more detail for each method later. Some of these analysis methods are used for specific cases. For free vibration, a modal analysis is used. And for forced vibration, a response spectrum, harmonic or random vibration analysis may be used depending on the case requirements. And for shock and impact loading, the static and or transient solver may be used. Pictured here is the equation of motion for a transient analysis. Note that non-linearity can only be found by using a full transient analysis. The sources of non-linearity are large deflections in the model, non-linear contacts, and material non-linearity. Now let's look into the dynamic solving methods. The first method we will investigate is the modal analysis. A modal analysis is used to find the structure's vibrational characteristics, i.e. unforced oscillation. The output is the natural frequency and mode shapes of the structure, which is a function of the geometry, material, and the constraints. Please note that a modal analysis is used to find the relative mode shapes and frequencies. It is not used to determine the absolute displacements or stresses. So an input force is not required. Let's now open Workbench, and I'll now run through a modal example. Okay, so now to make a start, grab the modal cell, and drag it on top of the model cell. And now we can double click setup. Okay, so I've previously created the geometry. I have assigned a material to it. We're using 2D surface geometry and shell elements to model the plate. And I've assigned a thickness through space claim and I've assigned the material to be structural steel. To start a modal analysis, let's click on the modal cell. Okay, so let's assume that the plate is constrained by this edge here. So if we go modal, insert, fix support, let's scope a fix support to that edge. And if we go into the analysis settings, we can say that the number of modes we wish to find is 12. In the analysis settings, we can also choose to add damping to the system. In this case, let's not add damping and we will find the natural frequencies of the structure. So at this point, we're good to solve the modal analysis. To view the results, we can click on solution. And over here, we have a table that corresponds to the mode to the natural frequency. We right click, we can go select all. And if we right click, we can go create mode shape from results. Here, we will have a deformation plot for all of our mode shapes. So as we can see, mode one, corresponding to the first bending mode, has the lowest natural frequency. Mode 2, we can see, is the second bending mode. And mode 3 is the third bending mode. Mode 4 is the first torsional mode. Now we've run the modal analysis, we can discuss solving in full versus solving in modal coordinates. Solving in full utilizes the entire FEA model, so the displacements are calculated using the stiffness matrix. This method is typically more accurate, but takes longer to solve. Solving using the modal solution uses a superposition of the mode shapes. This method takes less time to solve, but it is an approximation that ignores all of the truncated mode shapes. So if insufficient mode shapes are used, then the solution will be inaccurate. Going forward, we will be solving using modal coordinates. The next type of analysis we will look at is a harmonic analysis. This method applies a sinusoidal varying load to a boundary condition and determines the response based on the frequency of the input, omega. The result is a response versus the frequency omega curve. Now let's jump back into Workbench and run through an example. Okay, now that we're back in Workbench, let's go to Harmonic Response and drag it over the solution cell of the modal analysis. This will allow us to operate in modal coordinates. So now we've got the uh, lighting bolts, now we need to update. Now we can double tap on setup. 
Okay, so now it's going to combine all of these cells in the tray. So now we need to scroll down to modal to harmonic response. Under analysis settings, we want to set the range from 0 to 50 hertz. And we want to include clustering results. Clustering results will cluster the solution points closer to the maxima. All right, and let's set the cluster number to 20. We also want to add damping to our solution. So if we go damping ratio, let's set that to 0 0.025. Damping can also be controlled by our stiffness and mass coefficients. The damping ratio in this video is set for example purposes. You'll need to find the damping ratio specific to your system. So if we go harmonic response, insert force, we can apply force to this back edge here and apply. Let's set the force to be in the negative Z direction uh, under components. And let's make it a unitary force. We can now solve the harmonic response. For our output, we now want to view the deformation on one of the corners. So if we go right click, sorry, solution insert. And if we go frequency response, and we want to view the deformation. So you want to select some part on the geometry. So let's select this back corner here. And we want to view the orientation in the Z axis. Can now evaluate the result. And here we can see the peaks. Okay, so now we want to find the stress at a specific uh, frequency. So if you go solution, insert stress. Uh, let's go equivalent for myces. And here we want to uh, so now we want to find the stress at a frequency. So if we go frequency and type in 50 hertz, and we go evaluate, this is the stress field at 50 hertz. Alternatively, we can find the stress field at 10 hertz, and so on and so forth. So at the maxima, so frequency response, uh, we find our first maximum is around 2 hertz. So let's enter a value of 2 hertz. And we can see that the stress within the member is approximately 6 MPa. We can also animate. The next method we will look at is a response spectrum analysis. This method is used, for example, to analyze buildings exposed to earthquakes and electronic equipment mounted to a car or a plane. This method is used when a component of interest is attached to a much larger structure with a well-defined motion. A response spectrum analysis assumes that the body analyzed is much smaller and lighter than the body that is driving the motion. A response spectrum analysis determines the peak response of the smaller structure subjected to a frequency-based load provided by the larger structure. The result is derived using superimposed mode shapes. Okay, now that we're back in Workbench, let's drag out a response spectrum. So let's connect it to the model, and let's take the solution of the modal analysis and put it into the setup, and let's launch. Okay, let's now set up the response spectrum. Uh, let's start by inserting a RS displacement. So let's apply this to the fixed support of the plate here. So we need to select all supports. Uh, yes, we'd like to do tabular data. So let's say at uh, a frequency of 1 hertz, we want the displacement to be 50 mil. Uh, at a frequency of 10 hertz, let's say that we want the displacement to be 100 mil. And let's taper it off and say that at a frequency of uh, 50 mil, sorry, 50 hertz, let's also deform 100 mil. And let's set the direction to be in the z-axis. We now need to go into the analysis settings. Make sure that we have a single point, and we're using SRSS. And we're using all of the modal mode shapes. Let's insert a total deformation, and we can run the response spectrum analysis. Okay, now that that's done, we can have a look at the total deformation on the plate and we can see the deformation contour on the plate. Our maximum displacement is 150 mil. 
we can also look at the weightings of the mode shapes. So if we go on to solution information and we scroll down, uh, under response spectrum calculation summary, we can see the participation factor of each of the mode shapes we used. So for mode one, we've multiplied the eigenfunction by 0 0.1386 and so on for the rest of the mode shapes. The next method of analysis we will look at is a random vibration analysis. This predicts the response of the structure to random excitation statistically. This method is used when we want to find the probability of the shape of the structure when it has a wide range of frequencies applied to it, for example a spacecraft. The input for a random vibration analysis is a power spectral density curve, or PSD. This curve expresses the energy of a vibration event based on the frequency it occurs at. For example, we may have a plot of the displacement squared versus the frequency, or the acceleration squared versus the frequency. This is also known as an ASD. In the background, Mechanical runs a unit load harmonic analysis to find the structural response for a given frequency. This curve is squared and then producted with the input PSD curve to get an output PSD curve. The structural analysis is then run on the output PSD curve to find the probability of the structure's shape under random loading. Okay, let's now solve using a random vibration analysis. So if we grab a random vibration cell, drop it onto the model cell, and connect the solution of the modal analysis to the setup, we can now launch it. So let's insert a PSD curve, insert PSD displacement, let's scope it to the fixed support, and at a frequency of 1 hertz, let's say the PSD is 3E to the 1, and for a frequency of 50 hertz, let's say it's also 3E to the 1. So we're using a constant input PSD curve in this example. And let's set the direction to be in the positive X. Let's also set the damping controls. So if we go to analysis settings and we change the constant damping to manual, let's set the damping to be 2.5 E to the minus two. Or alternatively, the stiffness and mass damping can be used as well. Okay, we can now run the solution. Okay, now that we've solved, we can go to solution insert response PSD tool and if we scope to the uppermost point here and if we derive this and if we change the results section to Z axis and derive here we get the output PSD curve for the data point here. If we go to solution again insert deformation directional and if we go in the Z axis. Okay, so if we look at the directional deformation, the interpretation of one sigma is that at 68.3% of the time, the response will be less than the standard deviation value shown here. So if we were to go two sigma, then 95.45% of the time, the response will be less than this value. And now the final method we will look at is the transient analysis, which we will evaluate using the modal solution. So it will be a linear transient analysis. The transient analysis computes the response of the structure in the time domain using a time integration method. It is the most general way of solving a vibrational or time varying mechanical model as it can solve for non-linearities when using the full method. Okay, now let's do a transient analysis. So we go transient structural. Now connect the modal results to the transient structural. And let's load it. Okay, so now let's set the duration and steps. So let's say we want two steps. So now we have added in two steps. Let's go to step number two. Let's set the total simulation time to be 30 seconds. So if we go back to step number one, we can set the step time to be 15 seconds. So now we split between one 
group of 15 seconds for step one and one group of 15 seconds for step two. Let's set the time step to be 2.5 milliseconds. This is small enough to capture the frequencies we want to resolve. So let's now insert a force. Let's apply it to the top right corner. If we go to components, let's set it to be in the Z direction and let's use a function. So let's say we have a sinusoidally varying force with a frequency of 0.5 Hertz. Then we multiply that by time. So here we have a sine wave lasting for the entire time. So if we want to disable the sine wave for step two, we go down and we click step two, go all the way down, hold control. So we can control click all of that region. Right click, let me go activate, deactivate. So here we can see that the force is enabled for the first step and then is deactivated for the second step. So here we'll expect to see some forced vibration and here we will see a free response. Okay, now that we've set up the force, let's add some damping. So if we go to damping controls. So let's set the damping ratio to be 2.5 e to the minus two. And now we're good to solve. Okay, now let's insert a deformation probe on the top right corner. So if you go solution, insert probe deformation. So let's select the top right corner. Let's set it to be in the Z axis. We can view the time history of the Z axis, of the deformation of the Z axis on that point. So here we can see this is where we have the forced vibration and here is where we have the free vibration. We can also go solution, insert deformation total. And if we evaluate this, we can view the animation of how the plate moves in time. Okay, thanks for watching this video on how to conduct vibrational analysis on a plate.